Starting off at number 10. So as you look throughout the Quran, Jesus is identified as a prophet of God and he was sent to the Jews who had over time believed to have deviated from the teachings of Moses as well as other prophets. There was a time also when Jesus said, children of Israel, I am the messenger of God sent to you confirming the Torah which came before. And that's in the Quran Surah 61 verse 6. Jesus is believed to be the last in line of the Jewish prophets and he lived according to the Torah, which is the law of Moses, as well as he taught his followers to do the same. Also, the next thing to know is that the Prophet Muhammad is only mentioned a total of four times in the Quran, while Jesus, whoever, is mentioned 25 times by name. Not a lot of people know that. Now, while Jesus is recognized as the Son of God in the Bible, the Quran, however, uses other titles for Jesus, but it doesn't use the term Son of God. It uses titles like the Messenger of God, the Word of God, Son of Mary. Even at one point, it uses the term the Spirit from God. Now, on top of that, Jesus is referred more than any other person in the Quran next to Moses, but not all mentions are by name. Instead, some of these references just use a term like Messiah and son of Mary and things like that. Another popular Muslim view is that out of all the prophets and messengers of God, Jesus is the only messenger who received the title of Messiah. And that's also found in the Quran. Now the term can be translated as the anointed one and the phrase in Arabic al-Masih also refers to the role of Jesus in the end times in Islam. But most of the information about Jesus' role in the end times is found in the Hadith, which are the records of Islamic traditions and sayings of the Prophet Muhammad and not actually in the Quran itself. Now the next thing to know is that not just Christians believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. So when you go back to the birth of Jesus, Muslims believe that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary in a miraculous birth, which was a miracle by God. It's also interesting to note that inside of the Quran, Jesus actually talks while he's in a cradle, like as a baby. It says this, then she, Mary, pointed to him and they said, how can we talk to one who is a child in the cradle? He, Jesus, said, Verily, I am a slave of God. He has given me the scriptures and made me a prophet. And that's in Quran Surah 19, verses 29 to 30. Now, I don't know about you guys, but prophet or not, sign from God or not, miracle or not, I don't care if I see a talking baby. It's a wrap. <laughs> like, I'm gone, guys. Also, Jesus is known for performing many miracles, not just talking in a cradle. The Quran says in Surah 5, verses 110, Behold, I taught you the book and wisdom, the law and the gospel, and behold, you make out of clay, as it were, the figure of a bird by my leave, and you breathe into it, and it becomes a bird by my leave, and you heal those born blind and the lepers by my leave, and behold, you bring forth the dead by my leave. So those are multiple miracles that Jesus was able to perform according to the Quran. Now let's talk about Jesus in the end times according to popular Muslim belief. So in the end times, Jesus is actually going to declare Islam to be the true religion and all of the Christians will convert at the time. So all other religions will be eliminated, but the earth is going to experience peace. Like even the animal kingdom is going to experience peace. Crops and wildlife and everything is just going to be super flourishing. And for this time period, there's going to be no wars. It's just going to be complete complete peace. However, this reign of Jesus is believed to just last only 40 years. And during that time, he'll go to Mecca regularly to perform a uh, pilgrimage. It's also believed that he's going to have children and then eventually pass away and buried in Medina next to the Prophet Muhammad. Now again, that's not the blanket belief of the Muslims. It's just based on a popular school of thought. All right, two more facts left. The Prophet Muhammad is often seen by non-Muslims as the equivalent to Jesus when you compare it to Christianity. However, according to the Quran, Muslims believe that Jesus is not greater or better than the Prophet Muhammad, and also that the Prophet Muhammad isn't greater or better than Jesus. As a matter of fact, no prophet is greater than any other prophet. They're just prophets that God sent to fulfill a certain purpose, and that's pretty much it. And the final thing is, when we look at the crucifixion of Jesus, Muslims believe, according to the Quran, that Jesus was not crucified. Rather, it appeared that he was crucified, and that instead of being buried, he was actually 
actually taken up from the cross and God brought him to heaven. Now the Quran doesn't necessarily explain who that person was that was actually crucified that looked like Jesus. They believe that it appeared to be Jesus, but there's no real detail about who that other person was. You can find this in the Quran in Surah 4 verses 157. It said they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but another was made to resemble him to them. And also it says in Surah 4 verses 158, God lifted him up to his presence. God is almighty, all wise. The first miracle that we're going to be looking at is Jesus speaking in the cradle. So to give birth to a child while being a virgin, of course, was a criminal act during the time of Jesus. And the Quran details the way that Mary was saved from being charged as guilty for this by Jesus, who was still a baby in the cradle and he spoke. You'll find this in the Quran, Surah 19, verses 27 to 30. And this is what it says. Then she brought him to her people, carrying him. They said, O oh Mary, you have certainly done a thing unprecedented. O oh sister of Aaron, your father was not a man of evil, nor was your mother unchaste. So she pointed to him. They said, How can we speak to one who is in the cradle, a child? Jesus said, Indeed, I am the servant of Allah. He has given me the scripture and made me a prophet. That must have been crazy. Talking baby. Yo. The next miracle we're going to look at, number nine, is a table filled with food. So in the fifth surah of the Quran, this miracle of Jesus is mentioned. The disciples of Jesus asked him to ask God to send down a table filled with food and for it to be a special day of commemoration for them in the future. And in the Quran, surah 5, verses 112 to 114, it has the following to say. And remember when the disciples said, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, can your Lord send down to us a table spread with food from heaven? Jesus said, Fear Allah, if you should be believers. They said, We wish to eat from it and let our hearts be reassured and know that you have been truthful to us and be among its witnesses. Said Jesus, the son of Mary, O oh Allah, our Lord, send down to us a table spread with food from the heavens to be for us a festival for the first of us and the last of us and a sign from you and provide for us and you are the best of providers. And yep, that's exactly what happened. The table was filled with food. Let's talk about creating a bird at number eight. This is another miracle that's related to Jesus that's mentioned in the Quran where Jesus created a live bird out of clay. In Surah 3 verses 49 it says, and make him a messenger to the children of Israel who will say, Indeed, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord in that I designed for you from clay that which is like the form of a bird. Then I breathe into it and it becomes a bird by permission of Allah. Jesus also performed the miracle of disclosing secrets. Jesus was informing people about those things which were secrets to other people such as what they ate at home as well as what they had hidden in their home. In Surah 3 verses 49, it also says, And I inform you of what you eat and what you store in your houses. Indeed, in that is a sign for you. If if you are believers. Muslims teach that Jesus was a chosen messenger of God and hence God revealed to him secrets. You also find another passage in Surah 72 verses 26 to 27 that says, He, Allah alone, is the all-knower of the unseen and he reveals to none his unseen except to a messenger whom he has chosen. Also according to Islam, Jesus prophesied of Ahmad. So let me break this down for you. One of the missions of all the previous prophets had to do with announcing and prophesying that other prophets were gonna come. Similarly, quoting from Prophet Jesus, this is what the Quran says. And remember when Jesus, son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, I am the messenger of Allah unto you, confirming the Torah which came before me, and give glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad. But when he, Ahmad, came to them with clear proofs, they said, this is plain magic. And that's taken from Surah 61, verses 6. And if you didn't know already, Ahmad was another name for the Prophet Muhammad. The next miracle coming in at number five, we got to talk about bringing people back to life. Now this is intense. The act of causing a living creature to die or reviving the dead to life is like completely out of this world. 
And one of the miracles of Jesus was that he was, by the permission of God, able to bring the dead back to life. In the Quran, in Surah 3 verse 49, it is mentioned, I give life to the dead by permission of Allah. However, the Quran does not give the details of the person or people that Jesus brought back to life. It just said that he has the ability to do so, or I should say was allowed to do so by permission of God. We've sort of addressed this next one, but let's talk a little bit more about it, and that is the virgin birth. One day, as Mary was praying in her isolated place of worship, suddenly some angels appeared to her, and in the Quran it talks about this. It says, And mention when the angels said, O oh Mary, indeed Allah gives you good tidings of a word from him, whose name will be the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, distinguish in this world and the hereafter, and among those brought near to Allah. He will speak to the people in the cradle and in maturity, and will be of the righteous. She said, My Lord, how will I have a child when no man has touched me? The angel said, Such is Allah. He creates what he wills. When he decrees a matter, he only says to it, Be, and it is. Healing lepers comes in at number three. Now, leprosy is a chronic progressive bacterial infection caused by the bacterium Microbacterium leprae. It primarily affects the nerves of the extremities, the skin, and the lining of the nose and the upper respiratory tract. And leprosy also goes by the name of Hansen's disease. The Quran mentions the following in Surah 3 verses 49 also, and I cure the blind and the leper. Also when we go further into Surah 5 verse 110, and you heal the blind and the leper with my permission. All right, number two has a pretty interesting one, probably the most interesting one in this entire video. It's about the miracle that was recorded in the Hadith, so the Quran doesn't mention this, but it was from Al-Tabari and reported by Mahmoud M. Ayyub in the book titled The Quran and Its Interpreters, Volume 2, The House of Imran. As the story goes, Jesus, when he was young, he was playing with some kids in the community and telling them what food their parents were making for them at home. And some of the parents, they learned about this and they started to get really annoyed and stop their children from playing with Jesus because they're saying things like he's a magician, he's not a good influence for them. And the parents kept their children away from Jesus and they ended up gathering them into one house. And one day, you know, Jesus was feeling lonely and he went out to look for some of his friends to play with. And he came to this house where all the kids were and the parents were actually hiding them in that house. And the parents lied and said that the children were not there. And the parents ended up calling Jesus a pig when Jesus kept questioning. He's like, but who's in the house then if you're saying that the kids aren't here? And after being called a pig, Jesus then said, let there be swine in this house. And that turned all the children in the house into swine. The miracle that we're going to end off is Jesus being raised to heaven. In the Quran, we also read the following verses. And for their saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. And they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. But another was made to resemble him to them. And indeed, those who defer over it are in doubt about it. They have no knowledge of it except the following of assumption. And they did not kill him for certain. Rather, Allah raised him to himself. And ever is Allah exalted in might and wise. And there is none from the people of the scripture, but that he will surely believe in Jesus before his death. And on the day of resurrection, he will be against them a witness. And that's quoted from Surah 4 verses 157 to 159. Starting at number 10, Jesus is seen as the messenger of God. When it comes to the Christian view, in the book of John chapter 12 verses 49 to 50, it says, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as my Father has told me, so I speak. So we can see the parallel with Jesus being a messenger and and also in Islam, there's a passage in the Quran, Surah 4, verses 171, that says, Indeed, the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was a messenger of Allah. So it uses the term messenger specifically 
in that surah. There's also a similar belief that Jesus was born of a virgin. Now, when it comes to the Islamic perspective, the Quran says this. She, Mary, said, O Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? He said, so it will be for God creates what he wills. When he has declared something, he says to it only be, and it is. And that's taken from Surah 3 verses 47. Now, when it comes to the Christian perspective, the book of Luke chapter 1 verses 34 and 35 says the following. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. So both passages point to Mary being a virgin in the Islamic passage that I quoted no man touching me is just you know a way of saying that no intimate relations had happened there's also a similarity with the working of miracles the Bible has many examples of miracles that are attributed to Jesus not just a few but there are quite a bit as he traveled from different city to city now one of these passages is from Matthew 11 verses 20 that says then he proceeded to denounce the town where most of his miracles were done because they did not repent. So as you can see, there's multiple miracles that he did in just one specific city. This is not counting the other miracles that he did. And in the book of John chapter 21 verses 25, it also sort of alludes to this by saying, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. So all kind of miracles and everything were being done by Jesus according to Christianity. Now in Islam it says and make him a messenger to the children of Israel who will say indeed I have come to you with a sign from your Lord in that I designed for you from clay that which is like the form of a bird then I breathe into it and it becomes a bird by permission of Allah and I cure the blind and the leper and I give life to the dead by permission of Allah and I inform you of what you eat and what you store in your houses indeed in that it is a sign for you if you are believers and that's in surah 5 verses 110 we see multiple examples of jesus describing the miracles that he has been given the power to perform being raised to heaven comes in at number seven in islam there's a passage in surah 4 verses 158 that says this rather allah raised him to himself and ever is allah exalted in might and wise over in the bible the book of mark chapter 16 verses 9 also says this so then when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God so both passages from the Quran and the Bible do show that Jesus was taken up to God now I want to talk about the return of Jesus at number six yeah both Christians and Muslims believe that Jesus will one day return from heaven but the difference though is when it's gonna happen and how exactly it's gonna happen according to Islam Jesus is going to return during the wars that are fought between the Mahdi and the Mahdi will be warring with Dajjal or the false messiah. Now the false messiah by the way is similar to the terminology of antichrist that's mentioned in the Bible. So Jesus will join the Mahdi in the war against Dajjal and ultimately defeat Dajjal. And of course the return of Jesus is one of the central focuses of Christianity where Jesus is going to return to judge the world as well as rescue those who are holy and also will work to restore the earth. There's another similarity at number five in having disciples. In the Quran, it does mention this specifically. It says in Surah 61 verses 14, O you who have believed, be supporters of Allah, as when Jesus, the son of Mary, said to the disciples, who are my supporters for Allah? The disciples said, we are supporters of Allah. And a faction of the children of Israel believed and a faction disbelieved. So we supported those who believed against their enemy and they became dominant. From the Christian perspective, of course, this is a very popular teaching of Jesus that he had 
multiple disciples, probably numbering in the hundreds, but he appointed 12 apostles. But either way, in John chapter 18, verses 1, it says, When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Again, there's multiple passages in the Bible that talk about Jesus and his disciples, so this is nothing new, but I just thought it was a pretty cool similarity that both Muslims and Christians share. Also, number four, did you know that Jesus is compared to Adam? Over in the Quran, Surah 3 verses 59, it has a passage that says this, Indeed, the example of Jesus to Allah is like that of Adam. He created him from dust, then he said to him, Be and he was. Now in Christianity, there's a passage that refers to Jesus, specifically in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 41, and it says, so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. So both religions do acknowledge the similarity with Adam because Jesus wasn't born through procreation in both Christianity and Islam, but was born specifically just by the power of God. Another similarity that many people don't know is that He's also called the Word of God in both religions. When it comes to Islam, there's a passage that says, the Messiah Jesus, the son of Mary, was but a messenger of Allah and his word, which he directed to Mary, and a soul created at the command from him. And that's taken from Surah 4, verses 171 of the Quran. So in this passage, Jesus is called Messiah. He's called son of Mary. He's called the messenger of Allah. He's called his word, as well as he's called a soul created created from him. Some translations, by the way, use the term spirit instead of soul. But in Christianity, in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verses 12 to 13, it says, His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He's dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. Also, another very popular quoted passage in the Bible is taken from John chapter 1, verses 1, that says, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The mention of the Gospel, as well as Jesus sharing it, is also a similarity in Islam and Christianity. In the Quran, Surah 5, verses 46, this is what it says, And we sent following in their footsteps Jesus, the son of Mary, confirming that which came before him in the Torah. And we gave him the Gospel, in which was guidance and light, and confirming that which preceded it of the Torah, as guidance and instruction for the righteous. Then in Christianity, we can find mention of the gospel being shared by Jesus in the book of Mark chapter 1 verses 14 to 15 that says, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The similarity that we're going to be ending off with is being sinless. In Christianity, according to the Bible, Jesus is the only person who has ever lived without sinning once. In the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 5, it says, You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. The mention of this in Islam is found in Surah 19, verses 19, that says, I am only a messenger of your Lord to announce to you a faultless son. And the words, by the way, used in Arabic to describe him are, Gulaman Zakian, and that means most holy boy. And the word Zakia, by the way, means blameless. And it appears in the Quran only twice. So faultless son or blameless boy, whatever translation you want to use, it refers to him not having any sin. We have the reference of Jesus in the Quran as the Messiah. So Jesus has been mentioned as a Messiah in the Quran multiple times. But here's one verse in the Quran, Surah 3 verse 45, it says, and mention when the angel said, O oh Mary, indeed Allah gives you good tidings of a word from him, whose name will be the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, distinguished in this world and the hereafter and among those brought near to Allah. The next reference we're gonna be looking at is the reference to Jesus as a servant of God. Now I know some translations say slave, but that term slave actually just means servant. Jesus is called a servant of God in the Quran several times indirectly and also directly. And in the Quran Surah 19 verses 30, it says, Jesus said, in 
indeed I am the servant of Allah. He has given me the scripture and made me a prophet. Jesus is also referenced as a messenger. And the Quran Surah 2 verses 87, it goes like this. And we did certainly give Moses the Torah and followed up after him with messengers. And we gave Jesus, the son of Mary, clear proofs and supported him with the pure spirit. But is it not that every time a messenger came to you, O children of Israel, with what your souls did not desire, you were arrogant? And a party of messengers you denied and another party you killed. Now the reference at number seven refers to Jesus as the word of God. And that's found in the Quran Surah 4 verses 171. I'm gonna read the first part of it. It says, O people of the scripture, do not commit excess in your religion or say about Allah except the truth. The Messiah Jesus, the son of Mary, was but a messenger of Allah and his word, which he directed to Mary and the soul created at a command from him. And that reference there is pretty significant because a lot of times Jesus being seen as the word of God it relates to the Bible in the New Testament in the book of John, more specifically. Jesus in the Quran is also compared to Adam. Adam, of course, being the first person created according to the Quran. Now the Quran, Surah 3 verse 59, says, Says, indeed the example of Jesus to Allah is like that of Adam he created him from dust then he said to him be and he was but let's continue now with reference number five Jesus is said to also give life in the Quran Surah 3 verse 49 it says and make him a messenger to the children of Israel who will say indeed I have come to you with a sign from your Lord in that I designed for you from clay that which is like the form of a bird then I breathe into it and it becomes a bird by permission of Allah. And I cure the blind and the leper and I give life to the dead by the permission of Allah. Jesus in the Quran is also referenced as a sign. And the Quran describes Jesus as a sign in Surah 43 verses 61. And it goes like this. And indeed Jesus will be a sign for the knowledge of the hour. So be not in doubt of it and follow him. This is a straight path. Another surprising mention and reference to Jesus in the Quran is that he's not crucified. In the Quran Surah 4 verses 157, that verse goes as follows. And for their saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. And they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but another was made to resemble him to them. And indeed, those who defer over it are in doubt about it. They have no knowledge of it except the following of assumption, and they did not kill him for certain. Reference number two refers to the second coming of Jesus. So as the Christians do, Muslims also believe in the return of Jesus, the Messiah to earth, although his role and the reason for the return differs. But you can find a reference to this in the Quran, Surah 4, verses 159. And that goes like this. And there is none from the people of the scripture, but that he will surely believe in Jesus before his death. And on the day of resurrection, he will be against them a witness. What I didn't mention in this is that there is also, I guess it's like a bonus reference, like Jesus is referred to as being caught up and taken to heaven by Allah. That's found after the verses that say that he was not crucified. But let's end off on this reference. This one talks about Jesus not being part of the Trinity, according to the Quran. And the verse goes as follows. They have certainly disbelieved who say God is the third of three. Rather, there is none worthy of worship except one God. And if they do not desist from what they're saying, there will surely afflict the disbelievers among them a painful punishment. So will they not repent to God and seek his forgiveness? And God is forgiving and merciful. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was no more than a messenger before whom many messengers have passed away. And his mother adhered wholly to the truthfulness, and they both ate food as other mortals do. See how we make our signs clear to them, and see where they are turning away. And that's found in the Quran, Surah 5, verses 73 to 75.